couple on his backs out of the water up there. Look at him, he's pushing hard. And we still got plenty of fish all around us. It's 7.17 a.m., and redfish has already been checked off the list. So, what do you want to do with the rest of the day? So we'll just have you look into the lens for like 10 seconds and then he's going to point at you and you can say. He's, he's, that's not with me ever here. All right, do it again. My name is Joel Levine and I'm founder and guide for Redfin Charters. My name is Justin Carter and I'm a guide with Redfin Charters. My name is Captain Nick Winch, and I work for Redfin Charters. My name is Wilson Hanna, I'm captain with Redfin Charters. Hey, my name is Captain Ethan Williams, and I work with Redfin I'm Charters. I'm Captain Pat Person, head fly guy with Captain Redfin Jerry Nixon Charters. With Redfin Charters. Hey, my name's Irvin Roper, and I'm with I'm Redfin Martin Charters. I'm Martin Mouton, and I work for Redfin Charters. There's the family you're born into, the family you create, and the family that tells you where the triple tail bite is. That's Redfin Charters. Brotherhood of Species Specialists and Angley Tacticians in Charleston, South Carolina. Redfin's been around for about six years. I think the first year that we were uh, around, we did about 10 charters under Redfin, though I'd been guiding a while before that. Shortly after that, the following year, I think we did about 100. This year, we'll expect to do 2,000, so it's kind of exponentially grown, and we've got a great group of guides. We all work together to help each other get better, to help each other learn that style of fishing or learn that technique. And the other thing too is working as a team, whether it's going to catch bait or you know going to have a day of fun fishing. It's, it's nice to have a group of guys, not only that are my coworkers, but they're my friends. You know, I enjoy spending time with them away from the water. And that's been a wonderful experience as well. Welcome to Charleston, a city that's 100 years older than America. No high rises, plenty of low country, a mix of islands, peninsulas, and winding waterfronts blessed with historic charm. In a world where authentic is in high demand, their rustic is real. There's an assumption about fall fishing in Charleston. 
You know, the hunt for reds in October. But the fishery is more diverse than it gets credit for. We're a very unique fishery, especially this time of year. You know, there are a lot of places along the East Coast and along the Gulf of Mexico that have the same species. But during this time of year in particular, we kind of have that window where we have it all. Whether it's near shore, offshore, inshore, you know, we've got the traditional species as you think about, the trout, redfish, black drum, sheep's head, flounder. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize some of the other fish that are out there, especially the triple tail, the tarpon, good shark fishery as well. But we have a very rich, diverse ecosystem that allows these species to, to thrive, give birth and their offspring to grow into the next generation of fish. It's off to the marshes to chase shrimp and then to chase tails. Shrimp is the life of the water, it's, it's everything. And uh, we use it for bait, we use it for food, we use it for family, and it's one of the species that needs to be protected, but it's just the lifeblood of the water. And uh, you know, deep hole shrimping is what we're doing now. Those shrimp are diving very deep in the daytime, and we're using netting in order to catch those shrimp down you know, 20 to 40 feet, wherever they, they sit. A shrimp can lay upwards of one million eggs at a time, which hatch in a matter of weeks. Their survival depends on plankton, and therefore the overall health of the water. Without a thriving shrimp population, the ecosystem collapses. There's a reason tackle shop shelves are filled with plastic shrimp. As the saying goes, there's nothing in the ocean that won't eat a shrimp. And the biggest shrimp connoisseur of them all is the redfish. Charleston and the surrounding low country has a strong year-round redfish population. Part of the challenge is finding them without getting lost yourself. The waterscape is a maze of Spartina grass marshes and crisscrossing creeks. One S-shaped turn after another. The water isn't very clear, so sight fishing means waiting for a tail or copper shoulder to appear among the mud bogs and oyster beds. You know, they normally eat jellyfish, but I swear they come in here to eat shrimp. Because where we see them are in those channels a lot of times where all the shrimp are. Good fish pushing out there at our uh, one o'clock out. Gosh, a couple hundred yards away. I love this anticipation, especially when you know they're here. Be chaos at any moment. All 
Nicely done. Good fish. It's a fat, fat fish. They're eating good. Uh, that's, I mean, that's like black drum fat. <laughs> I don't know if it's 30 inches. That is a chunk and a half. It's almost like he got his back broke or something. I mean, he looks like he's stunted. <laughs> that is one of the fattest fish I've ever seen. There's something wrong with that fish. It's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> Landing a low country red is a home run, but don't miss the chance to hit a triple. Triple tail are warm water pelagics found in every ocean. In U.S. waters, they reach from the Chesapeake Bay to Florida, which makes Charleston the 50-yard line. And guess what they love to eat? You'll need to get close, so in this murky water, an elevated vantage point comes in handy. A cooler will suffice, but a polling platform is preferred. This one right here, the big one right here, is probably going to do something in a second. He didn't spook. He turned back around, though. Where's the other one? Want to clock out. Stop moving, stop moving. There's a lot of places you can go and go catch triple tail on buoys or on pieces of floating structure or off of pilings, and we do that. But there's also another triple tail fishery, and that's where I think that this is unique, is our triple tail get the grass. Ooh, baby. That's a bigger fish than he looked like. Triple tail typically run in the two to five pound range, but larger specimens are not uncommon. Trying to get him to jump. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come forward so I can get up on top of him. That's good. I should be able to land him. Give me some good dinner tonight, brother. It's 
it's time to park the skiff and break out the center console. And we're off. Sure, that is. Six AM departure. A fifty five mile run to the fishing grounds. We did some trolling, tried to go for some wahoo, some kings. We got a couple of smaller kings to start the day out with. decided that, you know what, we could troll around all day and we might get the Wahoo, but you know, we know we can drop down and we have a plethora of species down there that we could target and get a good bend in the rod and probably bring some home to eat. Nick picked off a couple of nice vermilion snapper, but it wasn't really happening for us. Like we knew they were there, but we hadn't gotten fired up yet. So at that point, I made a decision to take the chum bag off the back of the boat and send it on down about 60 feet or so to really get that chum closer to those bottom species. And at that point, it went from getting picked at to we were doing doubles as fast as we could drop lines down. We were coming back up and then the cobia showed up. After years of being overfished in nearby Virginia and North Carolina, the South Carolina cobia fishery was shut down in federal waters for all of 2017. They've rebounded, so this appearance is a welcome surprise. We ended up picking off one nice legal fish. It was good to see and delicious fish to eat. One of my favorite nearshore fish to target. When I was a little kid, I think I was probably six or seven years old, and I vividly remember we were staying in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I think we were staying at Nags Head. The one thing I remember asking my mom was, do people get to live on vacation? As a little kid, you know, that's, people get to live here where we come and we go to spend our, our vacation time. Do people get to live here? And of course, my mother said yes. And that stuck. That always stuck with me. Now, being a lifelong fisherman, spending time on the water, knowing I love to fish, when it came time to choose somewhere to live or even a college, I chose College of Charleston, not because I wanted a particular degree from the school. It was all about being the college in Charleston at the beach to go live. And for me, I don't think you could ever pull me away from saltwater again. It's a wonderful lifestyle. A lot of great people, a lot of great friends, a lot of beautiful scenery, a lot of beautiful nature. And I truly, truly am blessed to, to live here and have the job that I have. Redfin Charters exemplifies Charleston. 
The city is one big gathering, one big fire pit, a place where stranger is only a temporary designation. So come by any time, spring, fall, whenever. The water is always open for business.